And this morning, I want to minister the Word of God to you. I want you, if you would please, to open your Bible to the book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Luke 24 and verse 1. As I speak to you this morning from the Word of God here on this beautiful day of resurrection. Luke 24 verse 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And people of God, these same women went and they told the disciples where they were gathered. And they told them, His body is not there. The Lord is risen. And they didn't believe. Peter ran to the tomb to go and see and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and he was stunned. He was amazed that the body of Jesus was not there. Now, I want to read from the 13th verse of Luke 24. Now, behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? What things? Isn't it me? He's the one that happened to him, and he's like, what things? Tell me about it. <laughs> so they say to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And now the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him, but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel indeed, Besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with him that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? So they arose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. And as appeared to Simon, and they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace be to you. They were astonished, frightened, and supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do you doubt? Why does doubt arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. And he showed them his hands and feet. But while they were still doubting, the Bible says, to, to prove it to them, he said, bring me something to eat. And they brought him something to eat, a little bit of fish and, and bread, and he ate that in, in their presence. And they saw that it was him. It was really him, that he was alive, that he had risen from the dead. Can we give Jesus a praise offering? He is the resurrected Son of God. Hallelujah. 
Where would we expect to find Jesus on the day of resurrection? Well, we find him here in this passage that I just read to you, sneaking up behind two disciples while they're walking on the road going towards Emmaus. It was a seven-mile journey, the Bible says, and he sneak up behind these two disciples listening to what they're talking about. They were disappointed. They were discouraged. And he starts walking with them. They were disappointed and discouraged because what they had expected and hoped for didn't happen. They were sad. They were crushed. And here he is walking with them. And I want you to know this morning that I'm so glad that God doesn't just walk with us when we are positive. He doesn't just walk with us when we have everything together. He doesn't just walk with us when we are on a high mountaintop. But he walked with these two disciples when they were sad and discouraged and disappointed. When they thought all hope was gone, he walked with them. I'm here to tell somebody that God's still walking with you. And he will continue walking with you through the sadness, through the disappointment, through the setback, through the discouragement. In fact, sometimes he'll sneak up on you. And you'll feel his presence show up out of nowhere. And you'll know, oh my God, he's still with me. So he walks with his disciples and he begins to talk for them. You see, God doesn't need for you to be happy to do a work in your heart. He just needs to walk with you. He just needs you to walk with him. So he walks with his disciples to Emmaus. Emmaus was a very insignificant place. In fact, today they don't even know where it was. Insignificant place. They're walking to Emmaus. They're going to Emmaus. And he starts walking with them. And I want you to know that God doesn't just show up in big places and for big people. He shows up for insignificant people in insignificant places as long as he can touch them and reach them and bring them back to the place they need to be. Oh, come on, give God a praise and say amen. He'll show up in your insignificant place, and you may feel insignificant today, but he's walking with you. He sees you, and he will not let you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing about God is I see him sometimes. He'll show up and speak to somebody in the back of the room. He'll show up and speak to somebody that's not even in the building. They're watching online. They're in a hospital bed. The amazing thing about God is it's not, just, it's not those that might seem to be important or significant. Oh, my. I mean, good Friday morning, there was a word for somebody in this section in the back row. Interesting that God doesn't go in the front row. Not that there's anything wrong with the front row. But I'm just saying God is a God that will walk up to a disciple that's on a road of disappointment, brokenness, and sadness and say, I'm still here. I'm still with you. I'm still going to touch your heart. Can we give this God, this Jesus, a praise offering today? And what I love about the Lord is he speaks about himself. He doesn't speak about these things that they are sad about. He asks them what is going on. They tell him. But then he begins to speak about himself. And the Bible says he spoke to them. And from Moses, throughout the Scriptures, he begins to reveal to them, starting from the beginning, from Moses and all the prophets, he begins to talk about himself. I don't know what he spoke about, but I'm sure he began to refer to the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb that had to be killed, that had to be slain, whose blood had to be shed so that there could be a deliverance, so that sins could be forgiven. And he is the Lamb of God, and he had to be slain, and his blood had to be shed. So he's talking to them about himself, and he's talking to them on this seven-mile journey. To walk seven miles at a steady pace will take you about two and a half hours. So it's about two and a half hours that he's talking to them and walking with them and sharing with them. And they're walking towards Emmaus for seven miles. And he is expounding the word, showing them in the word. This had to happen. He walked all the way. He walked all seven miles. He didn't walk halfway. He didn't leave them before they got there. He walked all the way until he got to Emmaus with them. And I'm here to prophesy to somebody. He's going to walk all the way with you. He's not going to give up you, give up on you in the middle of the process, along the road, all the way. 
all seven miles, every step of the way, His Word will carry you. His promises will carry you. His presence will carry you. And then they come to Emmaus. And when they come to Emmaus, He begins to show like He's going on. I'm going to go on further. Bye-bye, guys. But these two disciples do something. They say, please come in. Stay with us for the night. And they invite Jesus in. They make room for Jesus. And I want you to know that Jesus is amazing. Jesus will wait until you invite him. He won't come into your life until you invite him. But the moment you invite him in, then he takes over. I'm saying to you, the guest becomes the host. When they were inviting him in, he immediately put his foot in the door, came into the house, sat down at the table, and he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. The guest became the host. He took over. I'm here to tell you, he'll be a gentleman as long as you're just letting him walk with you. But the moment you say, come in, Lord Jesus, he's no longer a guest. He's the host, and he takes over, and he'll break the bread and share it with you. And your eyes will open, and you will step into a new place of power, purpose, and destiny. How many of you have encountered the taking over presence and power of the resurrected Jesus? Some people just walk with him. Some people let him pass them by. Some people let his presence go on by. But there are others here like Cleopas and possibly his wife who said, no, don't go. Come in. Enter in. Take over. When God takes over, your life will never be the same. When God takes over, your marriage will change. When God takes over, He will reroute you. He will redirect you. You thought you're going to Emmaus, but you're actually going back to Jerusalem with resurrection power to go tell everybody that Jesus is alive. I prophesy to you today, there's a resurrection power of God redirecting your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They saw his presence and his power when they have invited him in and he broke the bread and then he vanished. And they say to one another, did not our hearts burn in us when he spoke to us? And I'm here to tell you, their hearts were not burning anymore. They were sad, depressed, and discouraged, broken and crushed. Their hopes were gone. But when he spoke, their hearts began to burn again. I believe today hearts are going to burn again. Hearts are going to burn this morning. Your heart's going to burn again with purpose, with power. Hallelujah. They recognized him when he broke the bread. When he gave it to them, they recognized him because I'm sure when he broke it and gave it to them, his sleeve moved and they saw the scar. And when they saw the scar, they recognized it is him. And when they recognized him, he vanished. Hallelujah. The presence and the power of his resurrection transformed their hearts. It's only a true encounter that can change us, that can change our hearts. Their hearts were burning. Their hearts were changed. And after this encounter, they simply got up. After two and a half hours, three hours of walking, getting there to Emmaus, as he breaks the bread, his resurrection power touches them. They encounter him in a new way. They got up and they went back. They started going back two and a half hours, walking back to Jerusalem because they couldn't keep it inside. They couldn't keep it quiet. God redirected their path. He said, you're not staying in Emmaus. You're not dying in Emmaus. You're not going to be hopeless in Emmaus. You're going to get up and go back to where I assigned you to be, and you're going to fulfill your purpose and destiny in the kingdom with my resurrection power. And they went back all the way. And after two and a half hours, they get there to tell the disciples, Jesus is alive. Just for the disciples to tell them, we know. He also appeared to us. He appeared to Simon. And as they're talking, Jesus stands right there. And he says, here I am. 
peace be upon you. Hallelujah. What a day of resurrection. That's what we're celebrating. Hell lost that day. Satan was defeated that day. Jesus was raised from the dead then. That's why we're here today. Can I have a hundred people to give God a resurrection praise and a shout and a jump and a dance? Somebody give God glory. Woo. I've got good news for you today. This resurrection power is going to redirect you, reroute you. Hallelujah. You're moving from MLs into your purpose, into your destiny, into the place God promised you would be. You're going back and you're going to let every issue know, every dilemma, every wicked work of darkness know that Jesus is alive. He defeated you and his resurrection power is real. Hallelujah. Because he got up, we can get up. Because Jesus got up, we can get up. How many of you know he didn't get up so we could stay down? We sang it in the early part of the service. Get up, get up, get up. Because he got up. We can get up. And not only get up, but we can go back. We can face whatever we ran from because Christ is in us. The greater one, the great hope of glory, his resurrection power lives in me. Would you tell the person next to you, get up and get back. Oh, hallelujah. He's real. He's alive. His resurrection power is in us. There are many of us that would not even be here today if Jesus wasn't alive. If he wasn't here, if he wasn't alive, if we didn't encounter his resurrection power, we wouldn't be here. This is not a career. This is not a job. This is not a profession. This is life. This is resurrection life. This is not a religion. This is not a tradition. This is reality. This is life. This is resurrection. This is real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the resurrection power. Every single person here this morning and online under the sound of my voice need a continual, ongoing encounter with God's presence, with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Even believers, even Christians, even preachers, even disciples, the two disciples needed an encounter. And that encounter changed them. They were never the same. All of us need an ongoing, continual encounter with God's presence. Why do we need an encounter? Because without His presence, we stop transforming. We go back to Emmaus. We go back to the way things used to be. We lose the fire. We lose the passion. We lose the urgency. We only transform when we encounter His presence. Transformation is supernatural. These two disciples could not be changed or transformed by just being with Jesus that day when He was walking with them and when He was opening the Scriptures to them. They changed in that encounter. When the bread was broken, their eyes opened and they encountered him. When they encountered him, they changed. They got up and they went back. Only God can do that. Only God can transform and change us. Each and every one of us need an ongoing, continual encounter with his presence, his resurrection power. Because that's the only power that can change our hearts. The resurrection is the only true source of power that can change the heart of a man or the heart of a woman. Only the power of His resurrection can change our hearts. We need an encounter like these two disciples because when a person doesn't have an encounter with God's love and resurrection power, when setbacks come, When problems come, when disappointments come, we can lose our faith. Our faith can be shaken. 
we can lose our focus, our direction. These two disciples, they were shaken in their faith. But what kept them was an encounter. An encounter with the living Christ. The presence of Christ manifesting in their lives. The world and the devil cannot stop a person with an encounter. I'll say that again. The world and the devil cannot stop a person with an encounter. A disciple like Cleopas with a, that had an encounter with the living, resurrected Jesus could not be stopped, could not be paralyzed, could not be held back. People of God, a true encounter with Jesus will make you forever a fearless and bold witness of the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. An encounter. I'm not talking about religion. When issues come and setbacks and problems and things come against you, religion cannot hold you. Your faith will not be shaken if you have a true encounter with Jesus. These two disciples went back because they had an encounter. Their faith was not lost. I've seen many people come and go, Christians come and go, lose their faith. I've seen people, good people, Christians, lose their faith, shaken because of things that happened in, in their life. But what has held me, what I believe is going to hold you, is the encounter that we have had with the living God. How many of you say, I need a fresh encounter? How many of you say, I need a new encounter? How many of you say, I'm in need of a now encounter with His resurrection, presence, and power? We need a fresh ongoing encounter because a supernatural encounter brings the reality of Jesus Christ into your life. These two disciples had an encounter that brought that reality into their lives. We need an ongoing encounter with His resurrection power and presence because we can only demonstrate what we have experienced. You cannot demonstrate what you've read. You cannot demonstrate what you've heard. You can only demonstrate what you've experienced. You can only demonstrate what you've encountered. If you've not encountered that power, that life, that love, you can't demonstrate it. But I'm here to tell you, if you've ever been wounded and broken and He walked with you and He touched you and He restored you and He manifested Himself to you, how many of you know, out of that encounter, you then turn back and you go tell people that are hurting, I'm here to tell you what He did for me, He will do for you. And when religious people tell you, it cannot be. You say, well, you can't stop it. One thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. I can't explain it, but He did it. I had an encounter. He touched my life. If that's you this morning, won't you stand and give Him a praise for the encounter that He has had with you and for the ongoing encounter that you will have with Him. Somebody say, Jesus. Won't you tell three people around you, I've had an encounter. I've had an encounter. I've had an encounter. I cannot walk away. I cannot give up. I cannot turn my back on Him. I am here. I am for Him. My life is His. Come what may. I've had an encounter with Jesus, with His resurrection power. Oh, hallelujah. Would you lift your hands to Him? Worship Him. I feel His power, His love, His touch on you now. It doesn't matter what you lose. It doesn't matter what you lose. It doesn't matter what happens. You've had an encounter. You've had an encounter. Oh, Shebre Vedida. And that encounter will hold you. That encounter will sustain you. That encounter will keep you. Would you open your mouth with me? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in your heavenly language. Pray in the spirit where you are right now. Oh, like those two disciples today. 
I believe Jesus is causing your heart to burn again. The touch of God is upon you, the fire of God, the presence of God, the power of God is moving upon you. His resurrection established His kingdom and dominion over sickness, over darkness. He is risen, He's alive and He still saves, He still heals, He still delivers. It's His resurrection power that proves His deity, that proves His kingdom and that proves His power. His resurrection, His resurrection proves that He is Lord. Oh, hallelujah. There you, there where you are, receive it, receive it, receive it now. Like those two disciples on the way to Emmaus, today we encounter the Lord. What the flesh cannot produce, the resurrection power will produce through faith in the Son of God. I release, I release the resurrection power. I release the resurrection touch. Receive it where you are right now. In the name of Jesus, would you pray out loud with me as you lift your hand to Him? Come on, let's pray. Every Cleopas, every disciple on the way to Emmaus, would you lift your voice and pray with me this morning? Let's pray together. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you are walking with me on this journey. Thank you, Lord, for your resurrection power, redirecting my life. I'm coming back into the fullness. I'm coming back into the anointing. I'm coming back into the flow of God. Move in my life. Take over, Lord. Take over. Come in. Take over. In the name of Jesus, I receive your resurrection power now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it.
Resurrection glory in Jesus' name. 